Hey, and welcome back to my YouTube channel, Software Testing. It's me, Daniel, as always. Happy that you're here today. And you have seen it in the title already. Today, I have my second community question for you today. And I'm pretty happy about the question that I got from one of my viewers. So remember the first video, if not, take a look at it here, where I was answering the question from Rahul and where I also explain even further, like how to send me a question. And if you would like to be on air on my YouTube channel to get some exposure in the testing community, to put your name on the tag and the flag and so forth. So I'm pretty happy that Eric, Eric, sorry, sorry, Eric, Eric Jacobson sent in a video file for us today and his question. So let's take a look at the question. Hey, before we start with the main video, I would like to thank you the following companies for their support. They support me through the YouTube membership program that I created for companies who care about software testing and are active in supporting the testing community. Thank you once again. If you want to learn more about the supporters, check the video description down below to find the links to their products. If you miss your logo on this page, follow the QR code or send me an email. Happy testing and now back to the main video. Hi, Daniel. Uh, my name is Eric Jacobson. I am the quality engineering manager for a global e-commerce site. And my question is about test environments. So we have a staging environment, and this is our environment that uh, most closely resembles production um, as far as integration and uh, uh, functionality. And my question is, let, let's call it a staging environment. My question is, should this staging environment reflect the uh, things that we want to uh, programmatically and manually check each time we go to production? Uh, or should it reflect what's currently in production? You know, so there's a there's a difference there, for example, if in production there's a certain promotion running, if if my staging environment has that same promotion that's running in production, then I might be more likely to find a bug related to that new promotion. Um, on the other hand, if the uh, staging environment is reflecting the content of production, then I might miss out on bugs that will occur in production in the future because I'm not testing other uh, content that is not yet implemented in production. So I hope that makes sense. This is sort of the trade-off between a test environment where we've sort of doctored it to be kind of this uh, universal optimal testing environment with all the functionality we think we need to support versus one that reflects the latest and greatest uh, content updates in production so that we might sort of serendipitously find a bug by testing against exactly what happens to be in production at a given time. Hope you can shed some light on that. Thank you in advance. So what are great questions, right? Staging pro uh, environments, production environments. I think we all have been there. We have working in situations where we're not sure like, okay, where to test. Is there any staging system at all or not? So hopefully your company has a staging system because I think that's key to success in order to yeah, have a, a, a good environment close to production to see like how software changes are affecting your potential customers. However, I hope that you have more than only like one step before production. So in an ideal world, I would say you have like three or four stages. So you have, of course, the developer sandbox, for example, might be a container, might be a virtual machine, might be whatever you have as a setup, as a product in your company. So the developers and also you as a software tester can deploy everything that you would like to change on your local development system. So you can change data, you can change the code base, you can see really ad hoc what's going on. So this is like the very first step that I would recommend to have. Second one is then like an integration system. 
yeah, where you can always integrate no matter what's going to happen. Always like whenever you're done with your, your development and with your um, with your, your, your code changes or the automation stuff that you would like to test really quickly, see that you have an integration environment where all the people contribute all the time. However, this is the most dangerous system that you have in your staging system because you cannot rely on a stable version because if you rely on specific test data, there might be another person completely wiping the test database or wiping the test database or using the test data for you. So really be careful. And then we come to the point where we are going to answer, where I'm going to answer Eric's question is like pre-production. Should it be exactly the same mirroring as the production system? Well, it's not easy to answer Eric, to be honest, because it really depends on your product setup and on the the things that you would like to achieve. And I'll give you some examples for that. So first of all, I have like three reasons why you can do an exact mirroring of the production system. And I, I took a few notes, so don't bear, bear with me if I look further down into the camera because it's, it's a quite a long list that I've compiled here. So very first reason number one, if you'd like to have a mirror production system is you would like to have the most accurate testing possible. So the closer the staging environment is to production, the more reliable, of course, the test stream results are, right? So if you really know that everything is the same, like from a hardware point of view, from a software point of view, all third-party APIs are integrated, that's the perfect ideal world, right? So then for this case, if you really would like to have that system, you have to invest also a lot of time and money to have that pre-production system that is close to production. However, on the other side, one can argue saying, okay, if you do all the effort of having the exact same copy of production, why not do some testing in production, right? So maybe you have a test user and if you're allowed to test on production, you can do some really minor, fine, thin user journey tests on the production system. Of course, only if you're allowed to. Second reasoning for, for, for mirroring the exact same staging as production environment is if you would like to have the environment parity. So really you have exactly the same amount of hardware somewhere in the staging environment. I mean with cloud-based applications this might be not be a topic. You can have the same setup of, uh, on, on a cloud configuration, maybe on a staging environment, easy to go. However, if you rely on on-premise solutions like you have your own data center and stuff, this is pretty hard actually to copy exactly the same hardware for a staging production environment because this costs a lot of money, maintenance and so forth. So, however, you should actually at least try to be as close as possible, right? So that's important. And the third uh, reason why you could have like the exact same software and hardware world is for load testing purposes. Again, if you would like to do load and performance testing, you have to be on the exact same hardware and software configuration as the production system. However, as I said before, I don't think this is going to happen out in the real, in the real world, right? No, no company that I have worked for, right? I know people in, they have exact same copy of the staging environment and the production system. So you always have to balance out things, right? To see like what is important right now for your testing activities, what is important for your, for your goal life strategy, for example. Um, so for example, if you do like, let's say a couple of major releases a year, you do some big bang testing before, then of course everything should be as close as possible to stage environment. But on a, let's say an agile world where continuous deployment is going to happen, this might be hard to actually cover. So here are some cases where the staging environment are not an exact copy of production. And let's see how this resonates with you all of out there. And I would love to really hear your comments down below in the video comments, like how do you do your staging environment, your production environment, because this is a tough challenge, especially also for the people who are going to maintain it, to provide it as a service to you as an internal customer, so to say. So the first thing I, I kind of spoiled, why is it not a good idea to really have the exact same copy as a staging one is the cost constraints. I mean, this costs a lot of money and you have to invest a lot of money in server software, licenses and whatnot. And this of course has a negative impact on your revenue share. So if money is not an option, you can go and, and, and go and do the exact same copy. Um, another thing which makes it a bit 
complicated is also the data sensi sensitivity. Like, for example, if you have real production data, you have to copy the production data to your staging environment, but you have to be careful with the data protection laws in your company and not in your company, maybe also within your company, but also within your country and laws. So you have to really put effort into to really have anonymized synthetic data that reflects the structure at least of your production data. So that's why you have also have to think about the data sensitivity to, to invest your time in creating realistic test data on a pre-production environment and not having the exact same data, of course. Then, which makes it also hard to have the exact same copy is basically third-party integrations. I mean, there are many systems out there interconnected with third-party libraries, applications, and so forth and so forth. And not all of the external services, they also provide a staging environment. They usually have a production environment to you. So you also have to be careful that you don't manipulate the data on the customer's end or on the third-party library's end. So you really have to see, um, maybe you need to, to have some risk assessment, things that you can cut off or systems that you have to mock in, on, in the staging system in order to, to get a, a fake answer basically from the third-party integration. And this can also have an impact, of course, right? Because it reduces the risk and costs for developers in the end. Um, Another thing is uh, feature flex and configurations. It's also sometimes the case. So sometimes staging environment are used to test sp specific features with feature flex enabled. And these feature flex might not be visible in production because you would like to test something. And you have, don't have, you have the exact same software version as well on your system. So this might also, uh, from a configuration point of view, differs, right? So that's the thing. And another one, another point is also availability and scalability, right? Is the production systems, um, no, sorry, the, the production systems, they also have like strict uptimes and stuff like that. Is the same thing for pre-production systems? I don't think so, right? So that, that's, that's the thing. Um, and I think what my, my, my uh, to, to summarize what I just said, so as you can see, it's not like really like, okay, black and white, that's the correct answer. It really depends on so many factors. Um, especially also another point that I just uh, would like to mention now is that usually you're not alone working on your product that you, or service that you're providing to your customers. Usually you have multiple teams contributing to one code base or to several packages that are like integrated on the staging system or on other systems and then being uh, released to public. You also have to see and also kind, kind of manage like the different software versions as well because imagine you would like always to have like the, this, the, the production environment as a system provide, uh, as the staging environment, then you can you cannot do continuous deployment because you always have to do integration first on another system, then deploy all teams together to the staging system, and then from there they have to do the release to the production environment, right? So this is also like time constraints and consuming. I think this is not going to work out. So um, that's why. From my point of view, well, this staging system doesn't have to be exact copy of the um, of the of the production system. I would, of course, always vote for having similar hardware configuration, at least close to that system. And then, of course, also from a software point of view, you have the 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 the, the most stable environment should be the pre-production or staging environment, right? So where everything was tested before and you do like the final integration, do some final checks with more realistic test data. That is also stable test data set. Uh, you can do some, maybe some test purchases or you have some test integration to third parties and so forth. And then you go to production. And then I always recommend to also do some testing in production. Yeah, so that's also something that, that I've done in the past. So the moment something hit the release and was out, I was like doing some minor uh, production testing to see if everything works out, right? So that that's that's kind of my point of view here because as I just mentioned before, there's so many factors to consider when you would like to have parity on the staging and the production environment. So I would suggest sit down with your team, your teams, make a plan, 
maybe also write down the different configuration files or configuration uh, systems and hardware um, requirements you have on the on the live system on the production system and see what you can transfer to the staging system to be as close as possible right and then of course it's also team alignment talk to each other see how you would like to integrate changes what is with big bang releases what's with feature flags how to handle third party integrations and also have someone taking care of the test data as I mentioned before, you cannot copy the real customer data to a staging system. They have to be anonymized, synthetic test data, and so forth and so forth. So there's so many factors to consider. And if you have the chance, you have maybe a platform team or a test architects team or a DevOps team that is actually handling the staging system for you. And this is also like handling the system as it is production basically because this is the the closest system and the system that you have to rely on before really pushing the button to to life yeah and i hope that answers your question eric uh, if not let me know down in the comments send me an email say daniel what have you what have you done that's completely wrong uh, also all the others watching right now let me know in the comments down below what are you doing as a staging system how are you handling staging what are you doing with production? Do you have other staging systems? I really would love to hear uh, what you're doing and like, yeah, what your solutions are. And as always, thanks for coming by. Share it, like it and subscribe it if you like the video today to support me. Happy to see you again soon. And don't forget, if you have a question too, send me a message on my social media. I will send you further instruction down below and I'm happy to see you soon.